This podcast is brought to you by Kempower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. And Star Charge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie, joined by my friend, fellow Out of Specker, Jordan. We completed a road trip recently together, and today that is what we're talking about, our nearly 800-mile road trip. Jordan took the Model Y Performance. I took the VinFast VF8 Eco and all about that trip our efficiency, how it went, how charging went, our experience overall, overall, just kind of highlighting that because it was my, uh, whoever's, you didn't really drive it, but it was my first road trip in a VF8, which is, I'm sure not a lot of people can say. (laughs) I feel like this is like the first road trip in general in a VF8. Um, You went where no one dared to go, which is somewhere. (laughs) Um, And it's funny. I wanted to mention briefly, and we can probably throw it up on the screen afterwards, but on VinFast's website, they talk about Literally in the front page of the VF8, boundless journeys. There's a whole section on Vin, on VinFast road tripping. And what they mm-hmm. say is, with tremendous range, lightning fast charging speeds, and access to more than 90,000 public chargers, VinFast EVs are ready for the journey and offer great range for your buck. Um, so we went basically tested that theory, and we tried their tremendous range and lightning fast charging speeds. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> where do we even yeah. start? I guess we could start with where we started, which was yeah. Raleigh or actually Cary, North Carolina. Yeah. Um, Cary, Cary, North Carolina. And, um, yeah, so, so out of spec has leased this VinFast for three years. Jordan and I have a podcast about that, that hopefully you've listened to. And, um, they, they had this lease deal. Kyle was like, Hey, a Francie out of spec podcast runner. This is your company car. So it's a VinFast VF8 Eco Extended Range Trim, as they call it. It has a 87.7 usable kilowatt hour battery. It says it gets charging speeds up to 150 kilowatts. The highest we saw was 114 sneak peek. And it's about 5,400 pounds on the 19 inch wheels, which are the, you know, also the, uh, the ones that are more range efficient. I'd say. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's where we started. Kyle and I picked it up. Kyle had to leave me with a Model Y and a VinFast VF8 that I had, you know, I'm only one person and I couldn't roach of them both back. So Jordan was kind enough to come out to uh, North Carolina and help me road trip it back. And, you know, he really, he was like, Francie, please let me drive the VinFast VF8 for two days straight, please. And I said, Jordan, no, sorry, <laughs> you've got to take the Tesla. <laughs> uh, and I'm glad I did. Um, so yeah, 800 miles, a few, definitely a few charging stops, um, went through Atlanta, Georgia, even so some traffic, we really got to try all, I guess, all of the actual road trippable things. So Francie, I wanted to go deeper than our last podcast. You know, the last one, like you said, is when we talked about obtaining the VinFast, which mm-hmm. yeah, believe it or not, we tried to buy a VinFast. Um, and, well, and we did, well, at least it, um, it was a good deal. That's partially why, but also I think it's really important to see how the spectrum of EV offerings is. We all know how Teslas are. We've road tripped them extensively and all the other cars we own throughout the company, a lot of different EVs, some Tesla, some non-Tesla. It's kind of all over the board. Um, even a bunch of weird, quirky things that Kyle's been buying lately. Um, <laughs> probably a whole other podcast should be dedicated to some of that stuff too. Um, but <laughs> the 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 road trip. So I wanted to ask you a few things that people would probably want to know about. Um, mm-hmm. So maybe let's just start with the the comfort. I mean, oh. 800 miles in a car, you yeah. should probably have a good idea of how comfortable it is. Yeah, definitely. So, um, I'm kind of a, you know, small person. I'm short. Uh, I'm like five, three on a tall day. Uh, but I did notice and Kyle noticed that the seats are kind of small. So that's one thing that I actually found fine. I was like, you know, just tucked in there. Um, it doesn't with this, uh, with this interior, with this trim, there's no like aerated seats or, and there's no lumbar support, which I always turn on, but I didn't have any like back fatigue. So I will say that like the seat and actually sitting there comfortable. That's cool. Uh, the actual, you know, feel of the steering wheel, fine and comfortable. 
I didn't, you know, I think that's one thing also of the nature of EV road trips, fatigue might be less of a thing sometimes because you get out of the car and you stretch and you do other things and you stretch your legs and you get your blood pumping when you're charging. Um, you could sit there in your car, but you don't have to, just a reminder. Uh, so I would say that that's pretty comfortable. In terms of the actual ride, there wasn't any like knocking or creaking or jingling or vibrations that kind of would, you know, fatigue my ears or my brain or my comfort level. So that was good. I'd say um, overall, it was pretty comfortable ride. And even uh, my dog, I was in the back seat the whole time. And I don't really know exactly why. It's not like it was, he, he'll get hot in the back seat no matter what car we're in, but he didn't ever have like a panting fit and he's always chill. So he's never like anxiety panting in the car. Uh, but he, the, I, so I think the airflow was pretty good too. So I would say actually pretty comfortable. And I like to ride with a warmed seat, no matter like what temperature it is, just to, I don't know, like that's comfortable. And those seats get really warm and the steering yeah. wheel gets warm too. Yeah. So. so even, even base model, you get heated seats, heated steering wheel, like you said, no cooled seats. Uh, the premium been fast one, the plus does give, um, more capabilities with the seat for the power functions. It's like, instead of 10 way, it's 12 way or something like that. Um, and ventilation. So maybe they're nicer. They're even a different material. They're a vegan leather instead of a like mm -hmm. faux leather thing, which I think vegan leather yeah. is faux leather. I don't know. They're and different. That interior looks good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. And the, I think, most of the car looks pretty good inside and out. Um, mm -hmm. And even the, the steering wheel feels good. Like you said, I think the logo looks a little cheap and chintzy on it for some reason, but otherwise like looks pretty great. And then the volume knob for all the complaints I have with this car, it is the best volume knob I've ever felt in a vehicle. So yeah, it's right in the middle there where your right hand would go to the middle console. And um, that is pretty nice too. I think it's also handy dandy. They do have stocks as well on um, the steering wheel and buttons. Um, so there is some of that tactile support for uh, your driving. And then the gear shift is the buttons in a line, uh, you yeah. know, so also, Ferrari. <laughs> yes, yeah, they, they've um, taken inspiration from other places, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, good. so yeah, the suspension, like you said, it's it's all just comfortable, like it's decent. I, I only spent brief time in the seats, I didn't find them very comfortable, but also not like really uncomfortable. It was just kind of a neutral thing for me, but I think seats really are very like person dependent. Um, mm -hmm. speaking of buttons, though, I also want to ask you about infotainment, that is a huge percentage increasingly important percentage of the experience of owning a car is the mm -hmm. software experience we're interacting with all different pieces of it whether it's navigation driver assistance all these components of the computers that are now running the car we have to interface with them to get the car to do what we want how was that mm. <laughs> it, it leaves me wanting that's for sure i think one thing that was an advantage on the road trip is that the car is like off for less amount of time so it has less time i mean i don't even know to forget what i told it last time i was driving it um but so i uh yeah it's on <laughs> it's just it's buggy dude there's some things that are funny um like it, it does have this driver monitoring system that i turn off because um it's very good it's very it watches you for sure like if you look down then it looks like like into your lap i don't know if you're buckling up or you just happen to like look down which you shouldn't while you're driving and i never do of course but like if you do then it thinks your eyes are closed and you're getting sleepy so that's why it says you're feeling tired or if you're looking at the infotainment screen too much then it will say hey pay attention to the road or if it sees your phone in your hand like if even if you're calling and talking like this it'll say hey use hands free so um that driver monitoring system is really intense the heads up display i would say is pretty great um but the actual screen in the middle so you know it's a tablet um it's a little slow like you touch it it takes a second to remember and i think the software behind it could definitely use just a revamp um it is you know they have apple carplay they have android auto but those can be buggy too especially if the system isn't necessarily like very very well equipped to work with it so i actually just prefer to use bluetooth uh, uh, you know I, I found that would be easier um it took a minute for the map to figure out where I was and to be connected. So there was actually just a little bit of a mix up with uh, the VIN 
in the car that I got and the VIN and the car that was assigned to me on the back end. So it took them about two days to actually get that rectified before the car would have the connection services and the data services to know where it was. And then I was able to use the app and stuff. The app as well is very um, laggy and buggy, but it's getting there. <laughs> I can technically unlock my car if I'm patient with the, with the uh, app and stuff. So um, it's uh different it's different i'd say if you had no experience like we say this too if, if if in a vacuum it'd be fine but it does do some things that are a little bit annoying um like the loading time can be a little bit slow and then also the actual screen it can definitely get smudgy so if the glare comes along and you're a human being with oil on your hands then uh, that's not ideal either but i think um yeah there's some things that it's very noticeable that they are not totally matching up with other offerings in terms of how advanced their software is. There's a huge striation of offerings with software across the board. We have some of the best, like Tesla and Rivian are just widely considered to be really good. Volkswagen <clears throat> was rough and is getting better. Lexus mm -hmm. was terrible and is now pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Toyota, like they're, they're all finding their ground. It's true. Um, yeah. And VinFast to me, felt like kind of, I mean, I've joked around and called it the wish.com model Y um, or just Tesla. And it, the software is that way as well. It, it mm -hmm. is intentionally looks not really even looks that much like Tesla. It's just, they've taken certain pieces from Tesla, even the screen itself being a 15.6 inch screen. It's not super bright. It's not as clear and legible and responsive as Tesla's, but how they handle the climate control section and some of the menu pieces, they tried to copy Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, it just looks like a, cheap copy and it's not very quick now there are some things they can address with over the air updates which over the air updates is a thing they brag about they're saying look we are capable of doing this that's super cool that's mm -hmm. necessary especially for you because you are mm -hmm. nowhere near a vinfast service center um mm -hmm. the, i mean the 800 miles we drove was from a vinfast service center assumedly to <laughs> your place <laughs> um, so you said you said goodbye to them um yeah so hopefully you don't need them much. Now we had, like I agree. Said, we did a, we did a podcast on the, the initial experience. We're doing this about the road trip, just initial living with the VinFast, but you're going to keep doing episodes on the VinFast. And I am super curious. Everyone's probably super curious and we'll see how your experience of ownership is, which isn't just living with it, but also dealing with servicing. Um, mm -hmm. In theory, you won't, be that deep into ownership per se. Like Kyle's, you know, Model 3 has 150,000 miles. Uh, this lease is 10,000 miles a year. So maybe when we're all said and done, 30,000 miles, but 30,000 miles, three years with a car is a lot of ownership experience. VinFast, mm -hmm. to their credit, have an incredible warranty 100,000 miles or 125,000 miles, 10 years yeah. on at least the battery. I don't know about the rest of the stuff, but that's impressive. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, software. There's, there's two aspects to how good it can, how good it is versus how good it can be over the mm -hmm. updates can improve the functionality. But if the hardware they put in there can't handle improvements, that's where you really see problems. That's where I'm slightly concerned with like Mustang Mach-E, like some other mm -hmm. offerings are slow just to begin with. Uh, mm -hmm. And that concerns me. Really curious to see how this does, because you, like you said, there's a lot of bugs to be squashed. That is definitely true. Yeah, I've referred to, you know, how many, well, maybe it's more of, you know, a glass and a piece of paper you need to trap the bug and get it out of the car. Maybe we're not killing the bugs, you know, <laughs> pacifists here. But yeah, I mean, there are plenty of bugs in there. And like you said, you know, if you start slow, what is the potential to get faster? What is the hardware behind, you know, uh, supporting the software? Is there potential for really improvement? I think that, you know, I've had a lot of people, you know, where I live, get in the car and they're like, this is awesome. And also they aren't comparing it to a Tesla. They don't drive Tesla or anything. So on the spectrum of what works, it's it seems to be technically like not caught up with today's software advancements. Um, but at one point it could have been like very, very cool. Like uh, definitely something that we haven't seen before. But so I think that what can be disappointing to people is that there's so much potential to hit software out of the park, uh, but they definitely haven't done that yet. Um, so I think some of the most frustrations that I'll have is the slowness and the fact that it will reset things from the last drive. And then I have to remember to go and change those. And 
that of course I'll get all the menus memorized, but at this point I'm like, where is that setting again? Do I have to go to like reset and tell it what I want it to do? Whether it's the drive mode or how it's monitoring me or all the chimes, it has a lot of chimes. So uh, I'll definitely get more and more used to it and figure out all the tips and tricks. I mean, one thing that I found annoying already is that if you don't have all the doors closed or all the latches closed on the car, it won't lock. But it won't exactly tell you why. Um, it won't even beep. It just won't lock, which makes you think, is the car not responding to me? And then you have to look inside on the screen and uh, identify that there is a door open. Um, so that's something where, like, I think any, you know, my other car, it'll lock still. It might not be fully closed, but it'll do its best to lock the car still. Yeah. Or okay. it'll lock the other doors. Um, exactly. And yeah. And there's also, like, you know, there's been times where we were stopped charging and the car, like, didn't some systems in the car didn't realize it was stopped. So the mm -hmm. proximity sensors that, you know, would be mm -hmm. used if you're parking and it's like, Hey, you're close to an object. Those sensors would just go off if you walk around the car. Cause the car is yes. like, Oh, maybe I'm still parking. It's like, it's like yeah. the parking sensor system and the charging system have no way to talk to each other. We even saw the car overheat. We'll talk about charging in a bit, in a minute, but um, when it was overheating, it was like, please pull over and, because the battery's overheating and we're like yeah. you're literally in park charging yeah what like <laughs> yes it's if the right hand is not talking to the left hand a lot of the times yeah it's um interesting to see uh what like when you walk away from a tesla it knows you're leaving and walking away because of a lot of reasons whether it's your car key or whatever it is and then it it does that which is of course a great futuristic feature but this one yeah sometimes you lock it and i can still hear the music going inside and i'm like oh, i hope the car turns off but i have to walk away from it right now so yeah things like that um but yeah should we get into the road trip and how it went yeah so we started right off in raleigh or actually carry that uh, infamously famous poorly executed ea station um kyle just mentioned this one a few times and i know he's been at, at it with videos so it's funny to see it's funny to see a charging station I've seen in videos and be like, oh, we're actually here. Um, and of course, yeah, one of the stations or one of the stalls didn't work or did two of them not work? I don't know. For some reason, I had to leave because a Volvo came and you and the Volvo were the only ones charging. Um, mm -hmm. You were pull pulling pretty horrible speeds, although that was mostly attributed okay. to a cold battery because the VinFast can't actually precondition. So our first charging stop, Fancy sat there for a long time and charged at 30 kilowatts. Um, now we weren't that low in the pack. We arrived with mid fifties. Um, we were just doing an initial charge before leaving the town. So ideally on a road trip, you'd be charging at home overnight level two charging to full or about as high as you'd want. Now, another weird bug is that the VinFast wouldn't let us adjust the charging limit and the screen, but now it does. Oh, it does now? Oh, good. It does now, okay. but yeah, tell them what we were experiencing. For a while, it wouldn't. It was grayed out, and we are like, oh, maybe you can't adjust the charging limit while you're um, charging. But then literally in the fine print, it says charging can only be adjusted when you're not charging. And it was like, okay, so yeah. literally you can just never adjust it. Um, but I guess that bug's been worked out yeah <laughs> i could adjust it while i was charging and while i wasn't charging so i'm not exactly sure what's like i'm sure there's things that we're just not connecting the dots that are allowing it to happen i mean i don't really know but yeah things have already changed from when you were here and i can't i saw that i could adjust that i think i even have it on video somewhere so yeah that was Great. weird we were like there was and you know i didn't have the data and i couldn't <laughs> and I couldn't get like the data linked up so that it could have the GPS and connect to the app. And it was also this like loop where it's like, well, you can only connect to data. If you log in, you can only log in if you can connect to data. So it was like, okay, yeah. well, another thing we can't exactly do ever until they helped me figure it out. We figured out what that hiccup was. Um, but yeah, one thing is that I wasn't able to precondition the car, which um, Jordan, actually, I don't even know if this EV can precondition. Um, well, they brag about the capability, I think, but it um, doesn't seem to do much. We couldn't precondition initially because, yeah, we didn't have navigation capable. Like mm -hmm. They just thought we were at the hotel for most of the road trip. Um, yeah. And, yeah, just so, yeah, you basically had to charge it to warm the battery up. And then, and then so it didn't always warm the battery up. You know, it was like 47 to 50 degrees when we woke up. So it was cold and then we would just kind of charge and maybe it would get mid 50s. But then once you get on the road and get driving, it warms up to like 67, 
yeah. degrees. So then Fahrenheit. we made it down the road, um, I don't know, 100 miles or some, 100 something miles to uh, Charlotte and charged there. That's when your car finally, we plugged it in, it started charging at, you know, 80 kilowatts, jumped it to 100. Um, we even we saw it briefly peak at 114, but it pretty much sat around 100 kilowatts, which mm -hmm. is cool. And yeah. then it overheated. The battery did. Well, it says, so let's be clear. We're not sure if it overheated because this wasn't actually a high temperature in what these batteries should be able to meet. So it said 95, I think it got up to 97 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, I'll pull it up here, but it was giving us this warning that was like EV battery overheating, uh, pull over safely. Pull over. And, yeah. and we were like, we're in park. We are charging. We are not driving, obviously. Also, why are you thinking that you're so hot and you can't handle it? was also yeah. the case and um that so was interesting it, maybe it is less happy that high but then later in the trip it reached those temperatures and didn't give the error so we're just seeing some weird inconsistencies with this car mm -hmm. um i plugged right in i plugged the tesla into an ea station and it worked just fine um but that's you know that's tesla we're not really here to talk about tesla we know it works we know it charges so it was interesting to have that alongside the vinvas just being like okay here's kind of the golden standard obviously tesla doesn't do everything right or everything perfectly we're not here to say that it's just in general it really works all the time i preconditioned yeah. like my car preconditioned perfectly it cooled itself when it charged it like it manages its thermal capacities um i can even check on that in service mode the vinfast didn't seem to you know it would it would arrive too cold and then it would get too hot when it charged and that was just kind of our <laughs> standard experience and yes typical, and we never really saw more than 100 kill we briefly but like it peaked briefly. at 114 nowhere near and we were so excited no, yeah. no, we're getting near 150 yet. And I'm like, how hot do you need to be to get 150? Like, what are the, do you have to be zero and 95 degrees? Um, not really sure. Uh, yeah, because we charged that will be at the low. future testing. Mm -hmm. we, we charged low in the pack. I mean, you plugged in at 13% at one point. We plugged in mm -hmm. at 50, 60. Like, we, we tried all different places mm -hmm. in the battery pack. It just yeah. doesn't charge quickly. Nowhere near lightning fast, as they say on no. the website. No, another emphasis on at home charging uh, for, you know, the best EV experience, especially if you have a VenFast, but I think that's true for any EV and uh, battery preconditioning. Another emphasis on that being manual, that being a button, please warm up my battery. I know what I'm doing as the driver. You don't need to predict that for me. Let me do it. <laughs> yeah, just give us the option. Um, I don't know why mm -hmm. so few cars do. Um, because yeah, that would I'd be love to understand great. why, like what risk there is in not allowing that. It is funny. Maybe they just don't want people to burn excess juice accidentally and then report that they're having low efficiency. But like people are going to be people like just let mm -hmm. us do what, whatever we need. Um, mm -hmm. I will say like there's an annoying quirk with the Tesla that <clears throat> I had navigated to a charger, but it was not far enough away to allow it to fully precondition. Right. So I navigated to the charger. It said preconditioning. It knew it was going to a charger. I arrived. I plugged in and the car said next time. Passive aggressively, it said, next time, navigate to a charger for better charging speeds. And I'm like, you know I navigated here. And Teslas have done did. that for a while. It's really annoying. It, it's very passive aggressive. And I know it it, is. I'm, I'm nitpicking it at this point, wrong. but like, come on. <laughs> so <laughs> Tesla's true, not yeah. perfect either. But no. it's been fast far from perfect. But again, these are things that somewhat could be remedied over, over the mm -hmm. year updates. So that's what I'm hoping for too is like, you know, if VinFast team happens to be watching, but like how uh open and embracing will they be to customer feedback and yeah. really enacting that into their systems, like doing whatever they can to make the experience better because the customers are the one experiencing it. Um, and especially informed customers, if they're giving their opinions, taking them and taking them with weight. Uh so It'll be interesting to see that approach because I know like Rivian, for instance, really will take feedback and be like, okay, how do we enact this? And then they do it like in the next couple of software updates. So I think that's pretty cool and a great approach. So we made it to Charlotte, North Carolina. We charged, it was sunny, <laughs> so sunny, the car got too hot. And that was a funny little <laughs> warning. And then where did we go from there? We charged deeply in Charlotte um, so that we could make it to basically our uh, planned final quote unquote final destination of the day, which was near Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so this was a really cool uh, side by side. You know, we charged to, I think you charged to like 
88, I charged to 80 or something like that. And basically mm-hmm. we drove side by side for over 180 miles. So a very long, roughly three hour stretch mm-hmm. um, to literally see how are, how are the car's efficiency using. And we, we ended up doing that entire stretch um, using the exact same percentage of the battery. So you use 70%, I use 70%. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. It was like, oh, cool. Mm-hmm. But the caveat is yours is 87 kilowatt hours usable. Mine's 78. So I have mm-hmm. a smaller battery. Uh, mm-hmm. I am a more lightweight car by about a 1,000 mm-hmm. pounds. Um, mm-hmm. So that could attribute to it. It's hard to say what's aerodynamics versus weight. Um, but all we know is the Tesla was considerably more efficient. That stretch, I did about 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. You did about 2.7. And we mm-hmm. saw this relatively throughout the trip kind of as an average you were in the mid twos i was in the mid threes so Mm -hmm. definitely a less efficient vehicle this vinfast is Mm -hmm. and what's really interesting is vinfast is almost exactly the same dimensions as a model y height Mm -hmm. width length the height Mm -hmm. is an inch different um but the same exact dimensions but over a thousand pounds more um which is more even heavier than a model x like, this is a heavy car. Heavy car. We're not really sure why it's that heavy, other yeah. than they just didn't, maybe they didn't optimize have the engineering. It. Yeah, the yeah. engineering to optimize like Tesla did. So that just wasn't their priority per se. Um, it makes me wonder, like, if they had, because those doors are heavy. Like, I mean, yeah. the car's obviously a thousand pounds heavier for a reason that if they could get rid of it. A- thousand pounds 500 pounds whatever it is how much of a difference that would make that you know maybe we should just take the doors off and go run around and see how it is just kidding um but yeah uh that was an interesting side by side comparison and we went you know around like 65 70 miles an hour maybe we were really trying to stretch it too because it was a a long stretch and i was like jordan am i gonna make it like do you think i'm gonna make it to the next stop because also the infrastructure is For the most part, where I, well, of course, where I can charge, you can charge because you had the CCS adapter for your Tesla. But also, for the most part, um, I think we had shared uh, resources along this route. Like, you could have found a Tesla charger, supercharger anywhere. Um, And I was able to find CCS chargers, but we definitely had to look on PlugShare to make sure that I had an option that wasn't just a level two somewhere. But it seems like on that route, by the way, if you're going CCS, there are options Um, and none of them are too sketchy or anything. I didn't feel that way. Uh, and although we were hitting them during the day, so I didn't really get to see exactly how the lighting was and how the atmosphere is at night, but felt pretty safe at every location, but that was a nice long stretch and it felt, I don't mean, it felt really good. I'm like, this car can go for a while without stopping and I don't have to, you know, really be like, oh my gosh, it's really running down the battery. It seemed to be a gradual decrease, the expected range that it was telling me based on uh, what was in the battery, the state of charge seemed to, you know, go according to plan. So that was also really reassuring. Yeah, exactly. So I think um, we had a good experience there. So with, with that range, by the way, the 70% of your battery using 180, I think 187 miles is how far we went. That would quote unquote, give you about 260. If we use the full battery, which is right okay. at its EPA range, which is really interesting. So can't, can't wait to wait get this to car range test up yeah. to Colorado and do our standardized range test. That'd be really I, fascinating. Um, I hope I get I to do it. You My have to do it. I'm, okay, I'm, make, I'm making you do it. I'll be alongside you in a Model Y <laughs> <laughs> Again, filming perfect. you um, <laughs> because that that's decent. So they have range going for them. We we did you know the first initial start of the trip. We were like we don't even know you know what's going to happen when this car gets down to low state of charge. Like we'll derate mm-hmm. power like crazy below ten percent. Who knows? But it never had any like major blatant issues. So range yep. seemed fine. Um, mm-hmm. Not class leading in any way, but totally usable um yeah, the charging not scary was, yeah not scary the charging like we said was rough but i want to point out even though you were doing like 100 kilowatts and the tesla can do 250 it wasn't like we were completely different in experience you were there mm-hmm. you were at a charging stop for maybe 10 minutes longer than i needed to be which mm-hmm. is not a night and day difference everyone's obsessed over like okay can we shave how many minutes off of our charging speed and of course kyle has tested the new tycon which is like insane but this is usable like this wasn't like a bolt where you're sitting there at 50 kilowatts being like all right (laughs) 45 minutes later no yeah i i definitely think so i think most of my charges were 
never under 30 minutes, but between 30 and 40 minutes to get what we needed, um, which is obviously different from yours. But it, again, it's all about, you know, we were em- embracing the experiment and the experience. So what's another 10 minutes at a, at a stop to make sure that we can get to the next stop? I think that's definitely part of the attitude, but it wasn't yet yeah, dramatically different in a way where, you, you know, if yeah. you weren't down to stick around, you would have been upset. Uh, yeah. But they are obviously different in the efficiency of the charging, which is something to note, but you can caravan with a Tesla, that's for sure. Yeah. And I mean, it does highlight just how like this is the most efficient VinFast alongside the least efficient Model Y and the Model Y absolutely blew it out of the water as far as efficiency. So <laughs> this is not an efficiency queen in any way, but it uh, it's still a car and it still works. And I feel like that's the part we keep coming back to is like, this just it's a car. It's, it's, it as works. I call it an NPC car. Like it just does its thing. Not mm-hmm. super well. It's not winning any competitions. Um, but as you mentioned, people do come up and ask about it. We saw multiple people at charging stops who were like interested in the car. Um, it is a unique design. It is pinned and Farina designed, which is interesting. That's mm-hmm. a very respected design firm that is now has their name tied to this not super respected car. But Tell me a little bit said, more about that um, design firm, because I know that uh, this is an interesting part because some people are like, oh, I'm not impressed by the design, but I have gotten people are like, this is a good looking car. Yeah. So Pininfrina has designed many things such as Maserati, Ferrari, like a, lo- a lot of award winning designs, a lot of designs very well revered in the car community. Um, they even designed the Pininfrina booth that they used to unveil these cars, I think back in 2018 Paris show, if I'm correct. Um, so, or the initial concepts, you know, so Vin- Pin and Frina helped design the VF eight and the VF nine, or at least the concepts of what they were back in the day. So to be clear, they're not officially involved in the newest VinFast stuff, but they helped VinFast create their design language. I actually do want to do a full podcast on this later on, just about, Equal design and actually Pin and Frina specifically as a uh, use case, as an example. Um, but the way they did the VinFast was safe, which I think is intentional because they're selling to people who don't want a cyber truck. They want a car. And this looks like a car and objectively looks better than many other cars. Not mm-hmm. the best. I, th- I think this is like, it's like my least favorite Pin and Frina design, but still. Mm-hmm up there as far as cuv designs go so Mm -hmm. i think it works uh i got to stare at your car a lot on this road trip because i was usually driving behind you um even at night somewhat i drove in front of you and behind you just to see the different led accents on the car that Mm -hmm. the front lighting signature is fantastic the rear is okay it's kind of weird but it, it works i think this design works um it's relatively sleek it's kind of aerodynamic it even has some active aero in it so yeah it's 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 a good design. So yeah, all that to say, people were interested in the car. It was fun to road trip this thing and have people comment, even on the color, which is interesting. It's a deep green called Deep mm-hmm. Ocean. I don't usually mm-hmm. think of ocean as green, but technically, the green color space is in the ocean. So actually, it, it works out. It's like deep kelp <laughs> green almost. So yeah, yeah, it has a nice sparkle to it, effervescence. Um, yeah, I do think it's a nice color. Uh, Kyle, of course, wanted a red or an orange to pop on thumbnails, but I think the green is just actually way more subtle, which I'm I'm down for subtlety here. And yeah, I think it's de- decently a good looking car. It, also interior, very roomy. I did want to mention that and the back seat is roomy. The trunk yeah. space has a ton of trunk space and it has a decent frunk. So yeah. yeah, definitely not squeezing in there or feeling too trapped when you're inside. So we got to, where are we now along our road trip? Yeah, so we we got to Atlanta, and that's where we stayed overnight. We kind of split the trip into two relatively equidistant sections. Um, We actually separated ways in Atlanta. Um, We each kind of charged on our own. I went to stay with friends. You stayed at a hotel that instead had charging, and it turns out it didn't. So (laughs) that plan was kind of thrown off, which Mm -hmm. is frustrating. But but all to say, we, we reconvened in the morning. Mm-hmm. at a pilot flying j evgo gm charging stock which yes is awesome. yeah yeah i was I, like jordan plugged, you have to see one of these yeah i plugged right in with the tesla into the ccs adapter ripped up to 200 kilowatts it was flawless charging experience for me um mm-hmm. you plugged in ripped up to almost 100 kilowatts <laughs> we it wasn't quite flawless the handles were really heavy and actually somewhat 
had sap on them because it was it was a beautiful station with like pine mm-hmm. trees around it, <laughs> but mm-hmm. the pine trees were like dripping sap onto it, which was kind of funny. Yeah. So we both charged up there, just kept going. That got us onwards to Bucky's, which we went to one of the only Bucky's that has e, uh, CCS and Tesla charging, which is awesome. Right. That's an EA, Outside EA of stock. Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Outside of Birmingham, Alabama. Um, yep. Interestingly, the there was, you know, like 12 Tesla chargers with one Tesla and then only four EA stops, which is fairly normal EA chargers. And one is, one is Chatamo. I'll note one that. One was Chatamo, which was broken. Um, the both sides were broken, the CCS and Chatamo. And then another mm-hmm. one was being taken by a Tesla. So yeah. we pulled up and you couldn't charge. <laughs> Jordan pulls up to a line, a, a big old line of Tesla chargers with so many empty spaces. I'm I've like, got what I, what four stalls. <laughs> yeah. And one is, has this red Tesla in it. And I was like, this is what, this is what they're talking about. Oh my gosh. I am feeling <laughs> some feelings here where I'm like, uh, what, why are you, why are you doing this? And of course people are like, well, it's probably cheaper, blah, 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 blah. Of course. And I'm not about to go up to this person and be like, you shouldn't be here because mm-hmm, whatever. I mean, they did that. Yeah. So I did have to wait. And then we got to talk to a, um, a viewer actually who had seen the cyber truck video, Sam, maybe we can yep. link his, he has a YouTube where he travels around with his dog as well. And he tra- he was going from Bucky's to Bucky's. And if you haven't been to a Bucky's, Yes. It's an Excellent. experience for sure. It has all the gas pumps in the world. Uh, it also has charging, which is great. And then there's plenty of snacks and also like trinkets and household items and uh, a beaver that is their mascot. And um, yeah, my we walked in and I have find my friends on. So like my family and friends can track me. And my sister-in-law was like, you're at Bucky's again. So she happened to check in on me. And before I was at Bucky's and then I was at another Bucky's. And um, yeah, I mean, it's handy dandy when you're an EV charger. But we had to wait for that uh, Tesla to leave and more room to be made which if you're in a rush, that might happen, I guess. And um, that was my first experience there. And then once we plugged in, it was fine. And we actually saw uh, a, a Bucky's uh, lead maintenance manager, you know, he was up at the charging station and he was putting up another, maybe more laminated sign on the charger that was out of order. And we were like, oh, so how do you figure out when these chargers aren't working? And he was like, well, we do a sweep. We walk around and we actually make sure. And so that was interesting too, because we didn't ask, Oh, do you plug in a, do you plug in an EV or like, do you talk to the EV drivers and they say it doesn't work? So that's yeah. interesting. I bet they have a pretty, uh, and t- like very connected relationship with electrify America and Tesla, because when this site host is providing this amenity, it reflects directly on the site host. I would say, uh, yeah. you know, if Bucky's is not taking care of the chargers as they should. So that's also an interesting discussion too, when it comes to, where the where the chargers are and who the site host is. Exactly. Yeah. Um which which is great. Like Bucky's is known to be a pretty great spot. They're known for world famous clean restrooms, like just lots of things to see and do and take in. So it's actually a brilliant spot for a charging stop because you're probably more likely to be happier being there than a normal quote unquote gas station. So we'll see. We have our first Bucky's coming to Colorado soon. I can't wait to go charge there. Um, that's yeah. going to have to be its own video. Honestly, it's going to be epic, but yeah, that was a great stop. Uh, we mm-hmm. went to just a lunch stop in Birmingham and mm-hmm. then we continued onwards to basically our final stop. Now this last, last stretch after Birmingham was, um, I think 180 miles or so, like a fairly, mm-hmm. no, it was like 200 something miles. It was a long you stretch. Stretch it again. Mm-hmm. And, and I had two very clear, great options for charging. You had one. So I, fortunately, one of my two options was literally at the same spot yours was. So we had another great charging experience. Um, went to a Francis energy station that had Tesla and CCS. It was at a hotel kind of in the woods. We saw the sunset there. It was really awesome. So that's where we did our final charging stop and Mm -hmm. it it just worked. So Mm -hmm. that was also great. The hotel was a little, I don't know, fine. It wasn't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's a hotel. (laughs) I mean, it, it seems like they have space to host events there. They have food. I think if you needed it at hotel prices, which is, you know, just be hungry for a minute, I'd say, but, um, you know, restrooms, a place to walk, walk to the dog around the area. And, um, uh, I'm not sure how dark it would have been at night at those chargers, but the Francis chargers, I'd never you know, used a Francis power charger. So that was fun. But yeah, that was pretty convenient to having CCS 
and Supercharger right next to each other, which it'll be interesting to watch that change um, as, you know, more of the J3400 standard becomes a part of the technology in EVs and more adapters. Um, but yeah, again, that was a great stop, fine stop, sunset yeah. stop, and yeah. got decent charge. And then we're able to, you know, we, we wanted to stretch it all the way back to our final destination after that. So definitely wanted to deep charge again because there wasn't a, a there wasn't much charging on the way back, yeah. right? I, and I, then, ha- I could have split it in half, but we had to deep charge for your sake to get back. And then, yeah, also because there's not a ton of charging around you. So we, oh I mean, you, yeah, like you mentioned in the beginning, I think you had like, you have like one CCS location, which is not super close to you, but it's technically in your city. So I guess that makes sense. Um, and some level two charging, but um, yeah. yeah, we wanted to get back even with a little bit of a buffer just so we weren't stranded anywhere. Yeah. But bottom line, we both road tripped. We both had a good time. Um, we probably could have done it a bit faster if we were both in a Tesla, but honestly still reached our destination and you paid yeah. way less than most people would pay leasing a Tesla. That's true. Yeah. And you know, our, we did the pretty much, I mean, we saw each other basically the whole time we had our walkie talkies and this will all be on an out of spec motoring channel video. You can see our road trip, Jordan and Francie using our walkie talkies and having the time of our lives on the road, which was really yeah. fun. And then, yeah, basically we did the same route, essentially the same speeds, same charging behaviors. I'd say like when we charged, not necessarily how great the charging was. And then I got around, you know, mid two miles per kilowatt hour and you got a mid three miles per kilowatt hour. So it seems to be a consistent one mile difference on the efficiency, which of course adds up (laughs) very quickly. But um, that was an interesting comparison. We knew that it wasn't going to be apples to apples, very much apples to oranges, but they can both do it and they can both do it you know, nothing shut down on the road, none of that business that people were trying to manifest in the out of spec refused <laughs> comments. <laughs> it was fine. I got home uh, really, really happy, actually. But it was a challenge here. I'll say, you know, we got home at a low charge because we didn't charge up before we got here. And then the next day we could get a little bit of the level two. But then I had to go to the outskirts of town because I don't have at home charging yet. And those who do have at home charging in my world have Tesla at home chargers. So I'm getting that set up and we'll be following up on that process because that'll be interesting, too. Nice. Yeah. It was, we extreme. did the road trip. We did the road trip. We had fun. That was about like Kyle at the very beginning was like, all right, hope you make it. And also just have fun. And I was like, you know what? That was good. Cause I think we were, we, yes. I don't know about stress, but we were just like, are we going to make it? Is there going to be any issues? Like yeah. mostly cause people are just so negative about it. Like yeah, trying to, you know, what's the opposite of knocking on wood? Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But the second, you know, because Kyle and I picked it up and it, we weren't confident how, how it was going to charge. But then once I dropped Kyle off, I went straight to a Whole Foods to an EVgo charger and it charged. And I was like, yep. okay, well, at least I can do this road trip and I don't have to worry about that. But then it would be like, all right, Jordan, this is the range I have. Are you, are you sure that we can make it? And you, you had the positivity too. And you were like, yeah, we can do like, it. We can do this stretch. Spec. We're pushing it. We're not going to plug mm-hmm. in this high and the battery. It's ridiculous. Um, and I'm glad we did. <laughs> we, we got, we got, you know, we're still going to do an official range test with this car. We're still going to do charging tests, but we got some initial impressions of, okay, 250 miles on the highway, pretty much guaranteed at highway speeds. Mm -hmm. Granted, we Mm -hmm. had decent weather. It wasn't like freezing cold. It also wasn't too hot. It was just good weather. Um, Charging wasn't so much of a curve as it was like, I think I called it a sine wave at some point. It was very up and Mm -hmm. down, which was very strange, but it stayed, stayed decently I don't know. And as far as that's zero to 100 kilowatt charging capacity that we could tell, it stayed more in the higher end for pretty deep into the battery. So mm-hmm. half decent at worst. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So <laughs> it's fine, but you know, quirky. We talk about some of the quirks in the other video of when we picked it up and, and earlier mm-hmm. in here, it's just oh. the quirky things. <laughs> yeah. And things about, you know, driving on the highway, of course, it was pretty comfortable. The sound system is fine. Um, oh, I, bad. you know, it's really bad. Jordan says bad. Is and... Terrible. <laughs> Granted, this is the base model. There is a premium model with a 10 speaker plus sub sound system. Yes. This is the base eight speaker. And the trick folks is to turn off the rear seats speakers. So it's only the front seats. And then it sounds okay. 
Yeah. I tried to jam <laughs> yesterday when I was driving around to a song I really like, and I turned it up and I was like, I don't, um, maybe I'll wait till I get home to my speakers. <laughs> but one thing that is great on the highway is the highway driver's assistance stuff. I really, really liked it. Um, so it, it, I like it. I'll tell you all the reasons. All right. So you can turn it on. Of course, you can turn it on on the steering wheel. And then it keeps you centered in the lanes. But if you want to put some input in, it doesn't get mad at you and make you yank it out of there. It lets you. So if you're passing a semi or whatever, you can inch over. If you want to change lanes, it'll get a little bit mad because you haven't told it with your blinker. But once you do that, you can change lanes and it doesn't turn off. Um, it stays on and then you turn off your blinker and it recenters you. Um, it will... Uh, you know, keep a, the happy distance between the car, this, you know, keep up to speed. And then if someone merges in front of you, it won't, and it, you know, they're far enough away. It won't slam on the brakes. It'll do the gradual, but I'm sure if, so, you know, if someone did merge in front of me um, pretty closely, it braked, but it wasn't, there was no phantom braking ever. So it does have sen sensors, right? Um, and, you know, that's something that's different in the Tesla's now, right? They yeah, use just had, the eyesight. You had radar, you had proximity sensors, you had mm -hmm. and cameras. Like you have a lot of things now. The cameras are not great, but they still work. Um, work. And yeah, you're right. The system works. Now you had some issues, and I when I finally test drove it too, mm -hmm. sometimes when it didn't or just randomly wouldn't work. And sometimes it was mm -hmm. like, well, is it the angle of the sun blinding the camera? Like it's hard yeah. to say. Like it was hard to say. I think it, it does works. get sensitive to light. Yeah, when it works, it's solid. It just sometimes yeah. doesn't, and we're a little confused about those sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's I'm sure I'll become less and less confused. But it seemed like when the sun was setting, it was it w didn't really like that. And sometimes then it was dark, so I was like, shouldn't have any problems. But I think it might have been that when people were passing me and their headlights came and messed things up, maybe that was it. Not really sure. Maybe it was something about the inputs that I was or wasn't giving it. But one thing that I do find annoying is that I just can't do cruise control alone, as mm. far as I can tell. You know, it has to be like using all of its eyesight. And I'm like, let me just at least take my foot off the pedal. I'll do all the rest of the driving, but I like a consistent pressure and, you know, speed. So maybe that's on me. Still learning. Uh, I'll, I'll read the manual for sure. I haven't done that yet. Maybe that's a you know sacrilege, <laughs> but I don't know how many people really sit down and read their car manual. They watch YouTube videos probably. <laughs> I'd be curious um, if you did because we, I mean, we are kind of like pioneers within the VinFast world. Like there's not that many people with these cars. Um, yeah. And there's people who are just curious more than anything because they've heard so many bad things. So I think this mm -hmm. is our chance to become quote unquote VinFast experts. And you're kind of, in charge of that because you're the one with it <laughs> i'm the one with it yeah so again let us know your questions in the comments um whether it was about this experience that i can follow up on we can follow up on or uh living with it so far or what you would like to see in the future have you ever considered a vinfast if so let me know do you have a vinfast oh my gosh we're buddies now. Uh, yeah. We're in this together. Got your crew, your squad. <laughs> got my crew. I got to <laughs> join the forums for sure. Um, and and let us know if you have any questions for Jordan too. I mean, a Tesla road trip is definitely possible. We know that. And a Vinfast VF8 Eco Spring Roll for rank road trip is possible too. We proved yep. it. We had fun. That's the bottom line. We made it. We're safe. Yes. So, here's With the to dog in tow. Exactly. Rafiki. Here's some more adventures. <laughs> Cheers to our Cheers. coffee and <laughs> plenty of more road trips. I'm excited. Uh, th something I want to do is go down to Florida and take the VinFast for rank down to the EVgo for Rancy charger in Tampa and then, you know, see some family and friends down there and make my way back. And then, of course, out to Colorado one day. I've got a brother in Nevada. Who knows? We could go everywhere. <laughs> do it adventures of spring roll. <laughs> yeah so thank you everyone for tuning into another out of spec podcast episode like i said let us know what thoughts you have on this really eager to continue figuring out more and more about this funny car that i have and uh, have the pleasure of getting to know and revealing everything i know to all of you who are curious about it and thank you again jordan for coming out to north carolina and helping us get my stepmother's car back to her she appreciated it always a pleasure all right, y'all. We will see you next time on the next episode of the Out of Spec Podcast. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>